Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board meeting of Monday, September 23rd, 2019. I am the Select Board Chair, Diane M. Mahan. Uh, I would ask my colleagues to introduce themselves. John Hurt. <coughs> Joe Kiro. Dan Dunn. Steve DeCourcy. Sandy Pooler, uh, Deputy and Acting Town Manager. Doug Heim, Town Council. Marie Krapalka, Board Administrator. Thank you. Um, our first agenda item, actually our first two kind of go hand in hand in concert. Um, we are very pleased to have a new appointed fire chief, Kevin Kelly, um, no stranger to the Arlington Fire Department. Um, he's dedicated, he and his family have dedicated uh, their lives uh, to the town and the citizens of the, this town and their safety and security. So I'd like to ask Chief Kelly to just come up, introduce yourself and Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Welcome. Uh, first, I'd like to start off by saying thank you to the select board for in inviting me here this evening. Um, uh, thank you to the manager, Chapterlane. I know he's not here this evening, but for having the confidence in me and to appoint me to the position of fire chief. Um, thank you to the past chiefs, Kate and Maimon, McEwen and Jefferson, for their example and leadership. But I would be remiss if I did not give a special thanks to Chief Jefferson. Uh, for the past two years, I've worked daily with Chief Jefferson got to see firsthand his dedication and commitment to the men and women of the fire department and to the citizens of Arlington. Thank you to all the men and women I've worked with over the past 25 years. Their dedication to the job and compassion for the citizens of Arlington has been inspiring. And most importantly, I'd like to thank my family, especially my wife, Christina, and my three children, whose love and support throughout my career made it possible for me to be standing in front of you right now. Now a little bit about me. I am the son of Jack and Claire Kelly. I grew up in Arlington, went to Hardy Schools and Thompson School, and graduated Arlington High in 1983. Joined the Air Force in 1984, where I served as a firefighter until I was honorably discharged at the rank of sergeant in 1988. Upon returning home, I immediately enrolled in college, and while working 40 hours a week, graduated in four years with my bachelor's degree from UMass Lowell in 1992. And then after my second attempt, was appointed to the Arlington Fire Department in May of 1994. I have now served 25 years with the Arlington Fire Department, during which I have served as the safe coordinator for 10 years, the retirement party coordinator. I'll see you all there Friday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> RSVP'd. Yes. yes. Uh, served as the department's training officer, deputy chief of fire prevention, uh, been on the honor guard and the union executive board. And now I stand before you as chief of the fire department, so you probably want to know what is next. Short term, I want to make, take some time to, to learn the lay of the land. I imagine before each of you became a select board member, you had plans and ideas and expectations, but once you actually sat in the seat, the view was very different than expected. So I want to take some time to speak with, uh, speak with and develop relationships with the members of my department, other fire chiefs, department heads, and town hall before I make any significant changes, if any, to the operations of the fire department. I would like to say that in my two months as fire chief, that I, the support I have received from all the four mentioned has been tremendous. Um, I'd also like to especially thank Patty McLean, my administrative assistant, who's really made what could have been a rough time very smooth. However, I do see some opportunity. First, in technology. In, in my 25 years under past leadership, we've, had, we've made big strides in the implementation of technology into the fire service, but there are other opportunities. As chief, I'll be looking for other ways we can use technology to improve and streamline how we can serve the community. Next is community involvement. I am proud to say that the Arlington Fire Department already has a history of proactive involvement in our community with programs like SAFE and the Seniors uh, Smoke Detector Program. I would like to see more involvement and more collaboration with other town departments like the police and the Board of Health. And finally, I see opportunity in the use of social media. The Fire Department has traditionally uh, been a non-self-promoter. We still do and always will take our greatest satisfaction from a job well done. However, times have changed. We ask a lot of our taxpayers, and I think it is important we let them know how we are using our resources and how valuable we are to the community. I would like to end with this. Though there has been a change in the fire department at the top, one thing has not changed, and it really is what matters most. If you are in need and call 911, you will have a well-trained, dedicated, and compassionate group of Arlington firefighters coming to your aid. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. My, my only thing that... <laughs> I know you're already doing, um, and, um, and I believe it's at every station. It's something that's near and dear and personal to myself, um, as well as others. My uh, brother-in-law is a Boston firefighter, and I don't know if it was IAFF or PFFM or a compilation thereof with Ed Kelly and others. They put out a, a documentary s series on firefighters who unfortunately are ill 
and or have fallen in the line of duty, especially right. around cancer-related right. illnesses. And my brother-in-law, Kevin McNiff, who's very vocal and public about that. Um, one of the things when uh, Chief Jefferson was uh, designing headquarters and the rest of the firehouses, which he brought in under budget and on right. time, was um, the special equipment that you really need to when you respond to a hazardous waste call um, versus many, many years ago, a hose in the, um, in the driveway. So my question is, am I correct that all three stations have, it's like an industrial strength, I don't want to say washer or dryer, but. No, just one of the state, head fire headquarters has an industrial sink washer and dryer that's designed to hopefully pull out, you know, all the, the cancer causing agents out of gear. So, yeah, and, well, and, and it suffices, the, 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 the one set's fine. I was going to say, I'd leave that to your, your domain, your purview. Right. Um, you know, if in the future it, it, it's necessity or the opportunity presents itself, right. um, I'd ideally like to see one in each station, but I understand the one that we have is exactly what we should have, and um, it's, it's more than adequate for what like, we've been trending on for now. Yeah, like you, I'm learning every day more and more the dangers, you know, we're, we're all being educated, and I know some of the things that could be coming down the road, like we're, we're becoming a OSHA. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we have to fall into OSHA requirements now. Um, things like second sets of gear, so you have a second set you can wear while the other one's being decontaminated, um, something we might have to look at. Um, but we've already taken other actions. We have the plymo vent system in the stations now. Those are, that's the hose that hooks up to the exhaust on the engine, mm -hmm. so when we're pulling out, all those fumes aren't building up in the station. Um, so, you know, we've been taking actions, but I'm sure there's plenty of other things we're going to have to do down the road. Matt, because I know that um, PFFM, <coughs> IEAF are trying to either through state, through right. OSHA, create funding opportunities, right. which I won't be following. No, <laughs> that will be my job, yes. Unfortunately, you and yeah. perhaps the senator and others will. So thank you. Thank Appreciate you. the opportunity. Thank you for your concern. Mr. Dunn. Um, <coughs> So a uh, question for you. So I know that uh, Chief Jefferson was in emergency man in emergency situation. Like when we activated that in the town, he was the the head of the emergency management That's response. Correct. Does that hat go to yes. you now? It I does. am now the town's em emergency management director. Okay. Another job I have to learn. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yes, I'm, I've been going to the. We have a, a local emergency planning committee. I've attended those frequently. We have a regional emergency planning committee. I've been attending those frequently. Um, and been in touch with me and done training and stuff, so I'm trying to get up to speed. Excellent. All right. Th congratulations. Thank, Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank you. it. Mr. Carroll. Thank you. I, I think the Chief's being a little modest because I've attended a local emergency planning committee when former Chief Jefferson was unavailable and he actually ran it, so. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, my best. So th we appreciate having yeah. that, that um, experience. And I'm glad you also mentioned the, um, the smoke detector program. I think that's something that's maybe not so widely known, but I learned about it uh, as the, the board's liaison to the Council on Aging. I know that you had the, um, you could probably I did, it, explain yes. it for the yeah. board better than I, but the, the members of the department going out and um, there was a grant to uh, actually check if fire uh, smoke detectors were in working order and change them. And um, my understanding is it gave a great opportunity for the, um, the members of the fire department to also kind of just check in on, on the seniors in the community. And what was important about that was the, the funding actually came from the Board of Health. They, they got the grant and they came to us and said, do you have any ideas? And we've been wanting to do that for a while. We, we just didn't have the money to buy the detectors. Um, so there was $50,000 and we were able to get into 120 homes. I think we installed over 500 detectors. Um, and part of that was we'd bring someone from the Board of Health with us and we'd yeah. also do a home safety check and a wellness check and, and make sure if there were any other things they needed. Um, everything from just, we, we installed air conditioners, we moved rugs and furniture, made pathways, you know, easy to get through, removed trip hazards, um, and then also some people got other things they needed, you know, whether it was uh, mental health help or any of those yeah. things. So it was, it was very successful. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that. And I know we, we saw you over at the kickoff of the um, uh, Age Friendly Community uh, Initiative as it was kicked off. So I really appreciate that because we know that um, you know, seniors being a particularly vulnerable community that, that, that r really relies on our first responders, uh, fire and police uh, yeah. a lot, so thank you. I agree. And I guess the only question that I would ask, and maybe this is a hard, hard one, but how, how can we um, help you be successful? Um, well, I didn't anticipate that, but... Um, <laughs> Leave me alone. No, no, no. <laughs> only kidding. And Chief Flaherty gets to think <laughs> about it. So. I, I would have to say, and, and uh, I, I mean this, um, <clears throat> From my experiences, just when I was a firefighter or working the last couple of years with the chief is 
I, I can't imagine anyone works for a better community as far as uh, whether it's financial support, um, um, just any kind of support. In my two months, I've had a call over and talked to Sandy or Adam or, uh, or the personnel director, uh, Doug, uh, Marie, all of them, uh, uh, even the Chief Flaherty, and everyone's been wonderful. So financially, I think we've great, great support and um, just it couldn't be a better place to work. So I, I don't know what else you could do, <laughs> to be honest. It's, it's great. great. Thank you. We'll see you on Friday. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chief. Is that it? Thank you. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh. Of course. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 thank you, Steve. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and uh, thank you for your service to the town and uh, in the Air Force before then. It's been my then. pleasure. Um, and and I, I look forward to, to hearing from you as you are, are on the job longer, things things that you, you like, things that you right. think should be changed. and. Um, one thing I hope we do get you involved with shortly as a community is we, that, that the high school is such a big project and you yes. talk about fire safety. There's an important role for the fire department to, to be consulted right. as far as where we're going um, with the building and how it's being reconfigured and, and access and everything. So I, I hope that, uh, that you, you're pulled into that process as we go forward. I already have been. That's, that's a great opportunity. You know, Arlington's uh, mostly residential, right? We have that commercial corridor going right down the middle of the town, so we don't do a lot of commercial stuff. We do some, uh, enough, um, but that's a big project, so we're excited to be involved in that. We've already, uh, the Chief Larry and I have already sat on the security uh, committee to talk about that, and I know the, our role will be big as far as the fire, fire protection part, and we're looking forward to it. Good. So. Thank you. Mr. Hurd. Just thank you for your willingness to serve, for your past service. You know, I think the town manager made an excellent choice. Thank you. From people, him and people I've talked to, it was an easy choice. So I look forward to work with with you, and you know anything we can do to help continue the tradition that the Arlington Fire Department has garnered thus far. Please come to us anytime. Thank you. Well, thank you all for your kind words. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have our acting police chief, Julian Flaherty. Um, Again, to Chief Flaherty, to you and your family, we truly want to express our thankfulness for your sacrifices and your family and dedication, as well as um, stepping forward in this acting chief role. Um, you certainly have the experience, the confidence, the knowledge. Um, you know, I've seen you as you've risen through the ranks, um, and you're a great inspiration to anyone, um, but so many people have commented on, it's nice to see a, a strong woman um, who is more than qualified acting in this acting role. Um, hopefully we'll be changing that soon, but um, thank you so much, Chief Flaherty. Thank you very much, and thank you all um, for having me here tonight. Um, I just wanted to give you an update on some of the good work that the Arlington Police Officers have been doing. Um, we've been, um, since I came in last January, I believe it was, we've been um, taking part in some professional development, and um, I've just, um, want to talk about a couple of the classes that we've been taking and a couple of the professional development um, opportunities we've taken advantage of in addition to our regular training, our in-service training, and all of our um, recertifications. Um, in the spring, we were able to partner with the FBI and the school department to bring alert active shooter training um, to the police department. So all of our officers were trained. Um, we went into the Bishop School for a week. The FBI came in and did some um, um, classroom and practical scenario um, training, and it was a wonderful experience. We were able to um, all be certified in level one training, and we hope to continue um, to bring level two training um, to the community um, soon. Um, also, the last time I came in in January, I think I briefly touched about a de-escalation training um, that we were bringing to the department, and we were all able to complete that training um, last year, and we worked with the um, Police Executive Research Forum. Um, we brought them in, and every Arlington police officer was trained in de-escalation training um, called ICAT, and it's an in it um, is a training that integrates communication assessment and tactics, and it gives um, all of the police officers the skills, the options, and the tools um, to diffuse a range of critical incidents. Um, so each officer has been trained um, in that. We were one of the first, um, along I believe with the Chelsea Police Department, one of the first communities in Massachusetts to train all of our officers in it, and I um, follow PERF and um, nationwide that 
um, people, um, departments are bringing that training to, to all of their um, departments. So um, we also had the opportunity to um, work with the Rainbow Commission over the summer and bring in the Maybright Institute who um, came in and trained 57 of our police officers um, in a class called Working with the LGBTQ Plus Community and People. Um, the training was great, it was interactive, it was focused on building trust and partnerships um, with the community and based on the training, we are reviewing our policies and um, possibly updating them. So we'll be sharing that with the Rainbow Commission going forward. Um, and we're also, um, this week actually today and for the rest of the week, we're partnering with other police departments um, taking classes in unconscious bias and procedural justice. The entire police department has been trained in both of these subjects in the past in in-service training, so this is a refresher course going forward. Um, I'd also just like to talk about some of the community policing um, efforts. Um, we, we talk about community policing and we talk about how um, community policing isn't just an event or um, a program, it's being embedded in the community every day and um, that's what our police officers have been doing. And, um, we have a great group who uh, has been um, um, out in the community and forming these partnerships. Um, some of the things that we've been taking part in, um, you may have seen on our social media pages, is Coffee with a Cop. And that's been a great event. We've had a couple um, since I've been in this role, and it's a great opportunity for people to come to a local coffee shop and talk to the police officers that are in their areas. Uh, there's no agenda, there's no real presentation or anything. It's just conversation if people have questions, and we've made a lot of friendships um, through those programs. Um, last week, we had a pizza in the park event, and that was extremely successful and very well attended. Um, it was a family event that we had at Robbins Farm, and we partnered with the rec department. Um, and we had some activities for kids and pizza and um, our offices had the opportunity to meet people that they usually aren't available to come with their kids at, at coffees during the day. So it was a great event and we um, plan on continuing that going forward, um, doing different events at different parks. Um, since I've been here last, we had our um, health, recreation, and cops camp that we have every year. Our officers really look forward to it. I actually um, start getting requests in the winter for our officers to work that. Um, and it's really great that we have the opportunity to meet um, the kids in the, in the community and watch them grow up and come back year after year. And um, it's really nice to see kids that who have aged out of the program and not able to attend any more requests to come back as um, assistant camp counselors because they want to keep those relationships going um, with the police officers. So we're, um, we're very happy to have that program going. Um, this past year, we also had a bike safety event where our bicycle officers, um, for the first time, took a group of um, kids out on the bike path um, for a ride. Then when they got to the rink, they did um, an obstacle course and taught bike safety. And we'd like to continue with that program um, while the weather's still nice and then continue it in the spring uh, and make it um, you know, a monthly or bi-monthly event because we think it's really important that the kids are learning um, safety at a young age um, when on their bicycles. Um, we also partnered with the Middlesex Sheriff's Department to have our third gun, buy back, gun buyback event in the spring, which was also very successful. Um, and it's an opportunity for people in the community to have, who have unwanted firearms in their house to bring them to us um, and we dispose of them and they have an opportunity to get a gift card and we worked with um, volunteer, volunteers from the community um, to put this event together. The first one we had several years ago, we brought in close to 100 firearms. Um, the second one we had was just about 50 and this past year we brought in 28 firearms so we're making progress um, making people's houses safe in Arlington. Um, and I guess the last thing I wanted to touch on was our homeless outreach program. And so we've been working with Health and Human Services and we have a homeless outreach team that goes out weekly. Um, <clears throat> and it's made up of a um, clinician, some police officers, um, people from Health and Human Services and other healthcare providers, the Sumville Homeless Coalition, um, the Cambridge Police Department and we attend weekly meetings and then we go out into the community um, and offer services and, and um, to our 
at-risk homeless population along with trying to get them housing. And we had an actual um, wonderful success story recently where we had a member of the community who was homeless for several years. Um, he was living in the woods for many, many years. And he, we um, relentlessly offered him services and tried to um, help him get housing and he refused. And this past summer he agreed, um, we were able to get a grant and work with the Sumble Homeless Coalition. We actually got him into housing, but not only did the police department do that, but our offices helped him pack his belongings. We used our um, wagon to load up his stuff and we brought him to his new house. Uh, he was a little anxious on the first day about being there, but we sat with him and, um, and it's a great success and we hope to continue this program and um, hopefully um, you know, get more people in housing if, if they're able to and willing to. So I'm very proud of the work that we've been doing um, and we'll continue to move the department forward and provide the quality services to the community. Thank you, Chief. And just to sort of dovetail on that um, last point, I, I really do appreciate on behalf of, of all the residents of the town, um, I've seen the uh, coalition that the Arlington Police Department and Fire Department with Health and Human Services as well as the Somerville Homeless Coalition um, go out and, you know, every now and then, especially around the Mugar site, um, there are concerns, people calling in concerns for the people who are out there um, and, and when it gets large. And I've always been very proud that uh, the previous chief and now these two current chiefs um, don't go out there and just kick people out and, and throw their things out. You really do endeavor, because um, I've seen it, you know, through the Board of Health and the fire and police chief to go out there and really try to communicate, educate, um, but not really overbearing and be confrontational or uh, basically say, you know, it's this or it's that. You know, the willingness to work with um, that particular clientele, um, and it's exactly what you said. It's, it's offering, offering, and, and waiting until they're ready to receive the offer, because that's the only way it's going to work. So um, that definitely isn't a one-time thing, and along with the, uh, I think it's some little homeless coalition, um, that they've worked in concert with Arlington for many, many years. They were before the select board, I want to say within the past two, three months, and we once again voted to continue to foster um, that relationship. So, and I want to say thank you to all the uh, women and men from administrative dispatch all the way up to um, police officers. We really do appreciate the great work you do in Arlington and how well you make Arlington Mass look. Um, I, I've been told 500 to 1,000 people went to the pizza in the park. Yeah, uh, that, you know, I was hoping that I, saw, I was told there was people taking pictures, but if anyone wants to on any of the events that the chief spoke about, there is an official Arlington Mass um, Police Department Facebook page, as there is, um, I believe, with the fire department, and they share all those pictures. But I'm, I'm monopolizing the time, Mr. Dunn. Oh, thank you. Um, that was a really long list, and I really appreciate it because I think I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean that in a really positive way because um, you gave us blurbs and headlines that relates to programs that are a lot of hours and a lot of work, and I think and I really appreciate the prioritization and the attention to all of those issues that are within the town. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? Th th I also echo the thanks, and I really appreciate the, uh, like um, Ms. Mahan said, that the stress on the partnerships with our health and human services agencies and with, um, with our public schools, as I, you know, as I appreciate the fire department's partnerships there, too. Um, just a couple of questions um, I, I just wanted to ask. Uh, you mentioned the de-escalation training, and I know you have the new training that's in. Do you still continue the partnership with Sheriff Katusian as well? Or? Yes, we do. Yeah. So every year um, we schedule his truck to come out. We park it in front of the police station, and this year I'll be sure to invite you, uh, um, the board, if you'd be interested in, in coming by. So we do um, work with them to train every year on de-escalation training Great. and scenario-based training. Thank you very much. And on um, the LGBTQ um, AI plus uh, issues, I wanted to um, thank you because I know that um, when every year we're assessed by the human rights uh, campaign and we get a municipal equality index and we were tantalizingly close to 100 mm -hmm. score, but one of the things that we had been lacking was a, a liaison with the police department. I know that you stepped up and were the liaison to the Rainbow Commission right. that you've continued that even as acting chief, and yes. I really appreciate that. I think that that, that sends a strong message um, uh, to the community. have a great partnership. Thank you. Um, two other things. Um, I also want to say one thing that you, you've 
I think you did, didn't mention, I had the opportunity as the board's liaison to the Youth Health and Safety Coalition to um, make the acquaintance of our new school resource officer who just started mm -hmm. uh, about a, a, a month ago. And I, um, as the father of a high school student, I feel so fortunate to have someone of his caliber they are working with the youth. I know that he had a first career in education over at Minuteman. Right. And um, I want to thank you for that um, as a parent as much as a, as a, uh, as a board member. Um, and also thank you for a town day I saw that Rebecca Wolf is back as our mental health um, clinician. Yes. Right? Um, and I know that she had started that, that program and um, right. that, that contributes to the success of some of these initi initiatives. And lastly, one thing I wanted to ask about is um, I you know, we continue, like um, communities all over the country, we, we face the, the scourge and the struggle with um, substance abuse disorder and, and frequently deaths um, with opioids. And so I know that the department just recently did a training for friends and, uh, and family, um, department on the, on the administration of naloxone. I wonder if you could say just a few words about that. Sure. At the beginning of the month, um, a mental health clinician, along with several of the police officers, had a training at the Fox Library, and um, we trained people. We trained people in the use of um, naloxone, um, and it was an informative night for people who are suffering from substance um, use disorder to come in um, with their families for education to connect with services. Um, our clinician gave an overview of our opiate outreach program and then was um, able to train anyone who um, was interested. Great. Thank you very much. Th thank you so much and thank you for stepping into this role in this interim time. I know it's been a busy time. So Thank you. Mr. Hurd? Just thank you for your continued service. Um, <coughs> the, all the programs that the department's come up with in the past few years to to create outreach to the community, I think it's been really successful. I was at the Pizza with the Park. It was an excellent event for the kids, but also it was a great event for the adults that were able to speak with the police officers. I know there was a lot of conversations of, of people that wouldn't generally be able to interact with police officers while the kids were off going down the slides. Right. So that was a great event, and events like that, I think, continue to foster a great relationship between the police and our residents. Question on the active shooter training that you mentioned, is that done in conjunction with the school department? I know you said it was at the Bishop School. Are the school administrators involved? Um, in not at this training, but I am working with um, Chief Kelly on developing a training for school administration. Sure. Is it specific to school situations or yes. just active shooters? School situations. Because that would certainly be, I think, mm -hmm. effective to have school administration there to kind of just yep. see what your training is and to get them trained as well. That's in the works. Yep. So thank you for your service. Thank you. Mr. DeCourse. Yeah, and Chief Larry, thank, thank you for your, your service to the town and, and everything that you've done as, as the, uh, the interim chief. And I, I also attended the pizza in the park last week, and I, I, my kids are all old, so I couldn't bring them. <laughs> so I was wandering around on my own, but it was, it truly that was, was you. that was me wandering around. That's that was truly, um, truly a great evening for the community and, and for the police department, and, and um, I, I think it was a, a, a great event. And, and, the, and the fire department was there as well um, in, in front of the bracket school, but uh, I, you know, by my count, there's about 300, but I heard. In anywhere from 200 to 700 people were coming in and out. So that, that's just a real good way to, to connect with the community. And, and I know you're, you're going to keep that up. And I, I think you'd mentioned Coffee with a Cop. I think the next one is next week, isn't it, at, it at is Kickstand? It is National Coffee with a Cop Day. So Okay, October 2nd, I think is. I believe so. You can check okay. Arlington MA Twitter account. Okay. <laughs> um, and it will be at the... Kickstand Cafe. Okay, and, and one other thing that was I, I did see was the you have the Citizens Police Academy right. again this year. Could you just and, and you may have told the board about it previously, but just what what that has entailed and, and how the participation has been in that. So this is our third week of uh, Citizens Police Academy this year. We um, several years ago we had a Citizens Police Academy. We brought it back, I believe, three or four years ago. I think this is our third class, and it gives people in the community an opportunity to come in one night a week for eight weeks and learn about all aspects of the police department. So um, we have, for example, classes on the history of Arlington Police Department and um, 
how forensics works and um, patrol and fingerprinting and um, our canine officer comes in and does a demonstration. And I think that our, of our offices teach um, all of the classes, but I think their favorite part of it is um, the students can sign up for a four hour block where they go out and do a ride along with the police officer and they're in an actual police car patrolling and um, we get really great feedback from our students on that, but it's our offices um, favorite part of the academy because they get to meet somebody and spend four hours with them and make that connection. So it's been great. Um, we've had um, several classes who have all connected and they all, all of the classes end up coming to the graduations at the end of the session. So it's been um, a, a great program that we have. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Um, and I do want to say we have our state senator Cindy Friedman here, who I know has some remarks for the chief and acting chief, as well as Mr. DeCourcy and I have been working with the town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, and, and deputy town manager, uh, Sandy Pooler, talking about a future legislative um, delegation update um, and the senator's kind enough to be here tonight to sort of give us um, a kicking off ground of things we should perhaps consider as well as um, if we have any feedback tonight that we'd like to pass on to the senator also knowing that we're crafting the framework for a, an agenda item but senator friedman thank you <clears throat> thank you madam chair um, well thank you for being here uh, for, for having me um, i know that Schedules got a little funny, so um, we're going to have a, a later date scheduled. But before um, the chiefs leave, I want to say that um, one of the things that they didn't talk about was the incredible work they do around substance use disorder and taking care of people with mental illness in this community. And um, we have we are enormously lucky to have a fire department and a police department who um, actually believes in treatment and that um, are willing to learn and to expand their skills and experiences so that they can treat people in our community who suffer from these illnesses. And it is not easy. We are really asking our police to take on a whole new role than they used to take on. They're now guardians. Um, our firefighters are learning all sorts of things that are, have nothing to do with fighting fires. Um, they are our first responders and they do an incredible job and we are so lucky. I talk to communities across the state and um, it has never been a problem here trying to explain to our first responders what's going on out there. So while we're trying to you know, fight the increases in fentanyl coming into our community, and I know that methamphetamine is, is an issue, and they will be ever vigilant. They're also there, and they are taking care of people in such profound ways, and we're really lucky because that does not happen across the Commonwealth. So I really want to thank you both, and I want to thank your departments, and I especially want to thank your leadership because without it, it would not be so. So um, I really appreciate it. And again, it's, I'm quite proud to be part of this community. Um, so uh, beyond that, you, I actually uh, asked you if you wanted to have um, this kind of get together to find out what your interests were, just to let you know what was going on at the State House. And I'm happy to come back. Um, I know there's a couple big items around transportation. Um, we just passed a major, we didn't pass, we just released a major ed bill, which I think um, has some really good things in it for Arlington, like uh, special ed circuit breaker has been um, addressed in a way that I think might help us see and you know, $500,000 more next year. Um, I know that um, uh, there's other opportunities for support for Chapter 70 and for uh, school funding, so happy to give you a breakdown of that. Um, we are, I am right now in the middle of working on a very big health care pharma bill because um, I know that the state is, the Senate is certainly committed to addressing the high cost of medication uh, along with access um, to these drugs. Um, I think there's, we have a um, texting bill, hands-free bill, which we've been waiting with bated breath uh, for an agreement to be uh, made. I know some of it is 
There is an um, agreement around no texting and driving. There's not so much an agreement about the kind of data that we should be gathering as we do that and what we'll be asking our, um, our police officers to gather. So, um, but I think we're gonna see something soon in that area. Um, so those are kind of the big pieces and um, this give you an opportunity to think about what I can do for you or what the delegation can do or what you want us to focus on. Um, and as long as it's what our constituents want, we're happy to help you do it. <laughs> and um, so. I, I do want to thank the senator and behind a great woman, a great man, <laughs> John Page, for being here tonight. And um, we are going to work on to craft what it is to have more of a, you know, with the, the senator and the delegation we have now, sort of a more working um, group agenda item. And what um, I've been discussing with Mr. DeCourcy and the manager as well as the rest of the board is, you know, first of all, um, coming up with two to four um, capital projects that perhaps um, could be included in a bond or a supplemental bond, but we don't know that. What we're going to yeah. do is um, just throw everything in the in the mix, and then you all, as well as um, any aid that you can give us. I know um, when we were talking about uh, reconstructing the high school, we have an Arlington resident who um, um, health energy, sustainable energy is really his forte, and he's volunteering his time. Uh, but I know when the town manager presented that. There were at least two different on sustainable and clean energy, perhaps three, that um, the manager outlined the uh, amount of funding that the town was committing to it with the anticipation and somewhat optimism that whether it be through um, MSBA, a state f uh, grant, um, we would get half, if not all four, or sometimes it was credits. So that would be one of the things that I would look to the senator in terms of who in the delegation, if anyone, um, could get their hands around that. Uh, so that's sort of my jumping point from there. I don't know if any of my colleagues, Mr. Kiro. Oh, I just had, I had one question, and, and uh, I, I realize that later in our agenda, we're going to be asked to endorse a piece of legislation, the Future Act, so an, a, um, an act for utility transition to using renewable energy. Yeah. And I, I didn't know if well the senator is here, if she wanted to say a few words about that. So there is there are a number of um, initiatives around clean energy. Energy. And I, I didn't know if I'm sorry, I may be wrong on this, but I think there that it's part of a resolution yes. that was passed to become uh, carbon neutral mm -hmm. um, or zero emission um, by a certain date. And you should support it. We should all support it. We should be very active. We should be fighting up on um, Beacon Hill so any kind of sustainable um, energy efforts get supported, we get incentives for doing it. Um, I know there's gonna be a lot of that work is coming together. I am not the lead on those bills. Um, I look to other senators who are very well versed in this area um, uh, you know, to follow their lead, but it's great and important to hear from my community so that I can walk in there and say, you have to do something because I am getting enormous pressure from everyone mm -hmm. To, um, to address climate change. And so I, I um, encourage you to support that, to endorse it, and I also encourage you to keep talking to me and the delegation, um, especially around opportunities where um, the state could step in and help with financing of uh, sustainable and renewable energy projects. Great, thank you. Mr. DeCorsi. Yeah, uh, Senator Friedman, thank you for, for coming here tonight, reaching out to us too to give us an update and I know we'll have something more formal and I also want to um, thank you for your leadership on the on the farmer bill because I know that is a it's a big pull and and it's it's been a long time coming and, and you're doing great work on that and as for aid reform one of my first meetings with the, the joint meeting with the school committee the delegation and, and the select board um, we were pleased here in Arlington that we received more education assistance and, and one of the things you said at that meeting is yeah that's great but don't stop there keep working for more and I think we're seeing that now with this the, the ed bill that's going to be coming out so I, I think that was a great message to, to, to give to yeah. us and, and um, we appreciate it we look forward to continuing to work with you yeah and I know that Arlington has you know is one of 
a small number of communities that have some special challenges in their you know, density and their ability to grow and their ability to grow revenue. And so I think this is an opportunity for us to talk about what, if anything, we could do to formulas that would support communities like Arlington who have, you know, who are very committed to education, um, spend an enormous amount of their revenue on education, but don't have a lot of room to, to grow that. So I think this is a good time for us to sit down and have that conversation and see if we can um, maybe do some work around the local um, required contributions. Well, thank you, Senator, for Great. coming in. I think we've kind of outlined sort of a f framework or matrix or whatever word I should be using in terms of, and I'm sure there'll be other things. Um, I'm envisioning that this would be early in the agenda, sure. um, whether it's a budget and revenue task force meeting or here. Uh, it will definitely be outlined and defined, but um, just if everybody um, from both sides of the microphone table, whatever, um, just throw anything in, um, and if, if I put something forth and it's like that that's, can't even be considered, it's not even an avenue, tell me right away and there won't, won't be any hard feelings, we'll move on to the next, because if you throw 10 and two stick, I'm, I'm happy. Well, as they say, it never hurts to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to our consent agenda, agenda item three, request special one day all alcohol license. October 5th, 2019 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. Andrew Lipson for request special one day beer and wine license. October 16th, 2019, Robin Moore's, Whittemore Robbins House for a private event. Mark Thompson request special one day beer and wine license. October 12th, 2019, Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. Fran Franco Alvarado and a request three day special one day all alcohol licenses October 18th, 19th and 20th, 2029 at St. Athanasius the Great Greek Orthodox Church for Opa Cuisina. Dean Iocomidis is the parish council president. Is there anyone here to speak to any of these items on consent agenda? And I apologize if I mispronounced any names. If not, no I'll take problem. Moved Se by Se Mr. Hurd, seconded second. by Mr. Kiro. Um, any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We go to appointments, LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission, we have Andy Rubinson, term to expire June, 20, June 30th, 2022. If you could just again introduce yourself and give us a brief outline. Sure. Or uh, not so brief. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Andy Rubinson. I've been an Arlington resident for the last five years and plan to stay around for the foreseeable future. Um, I bring some pretty strong experience in community activities. Uh, I was a member of the local steering committee for the Human Rights Campaign. You mentioned about the Municipal Equality Index. Um, I was also part of their National Board of Governors, worked on um, a number of different committees or led a number of different committees on um, fundraising, on uh, membership, community outreach. I also helped plan a gala dinner that raised over a quarter million dollars um, community. I have also been a member of the board of the MIT uh, LGBT Alumni Association. Um, those are both past uh, activities uh, and have been uh, a little less involved. I got married and set up shop uh, at home, but now I am uh, looking to get you know back involved in, in the community and I think I'll be able to translate my skills um, to help build the Rainbow Commission uh, already started getting involved in uh, how we can uh, take advantage of the town day signups and other mailing lists to help drive some volunteer information sessions and actually get more folks involved to help us uh, deliver the types of community uh, activities and things that we want to see uh, as part of our, our mission. Thank you. I'm tired. <laughs> like, uh, Mr. Dunn. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Dunn. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. So when we created the uh, LGBTQIA plus uh, the Rainbow Commission a couple of years ago, I've been really very happy with how it's become like the center of um, our, it, it, like it's provided a level of focus and center for the activities and the thoughts of the town that I think has been really productive. And so thank you for working on it and thank you for um, pushing, it, uh, pushing it forward. Great, thanks. I, th I think there's a lot more opportunity, so. Um, like your ring, too. 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I do want to say, with a new commission member, but certainly not new to the committee, um, one of the things that I really think is so beneficial and needed, um, and I think the LGBTQI, QIA plus Rainbow Commission has done a really good job with, um, and I know will continue to foster on, is um, not only interactions with youth groups, um, straight all the way across the board, but also interaction with youth groups from like surrounding communities. Um, I, I've seen some of those events. Um, I belie believe they're extremely beneficial. You know, I've gotten limited feedback, all of it positive, but um, just, you know, working with high school youth and, and everything else you have to go through, um, you know, when you're a teenager in high school. Um, and everything is just as important as something else. I'm not saying um, one person, child's triumphs or struggles or, or any less than any, anybody else's, but I have felt there's been a void there um, for many, many years that we're starting to fill, so I know you'll bring your energy to that and continue on I with absolutely that. Absolutely, I know that that's one of the, the areas we want to do, you know, outreach to the um, local schools and things and, and also building bridges with other community groups so that we're not all doing it on ourselves, you know, we've, we've uh, you know, already have interactions with like Lex Pride and Belmont and other uh, areas, so you know it's, it takes a village, so yeah. or a couple of villages. <laughs> and in the only other feedback that I've heard on the events that have been ex successful all the way around is um, a lot of the high school students. They really get um, the person coming at them in terms of compassion and sincerity. Perhaps having walked that road. <clears throat> perhaps not having walked it, but want to do it that with them. And I think that um, Arlington's been very good doing that. We need to continue on, and I think you've got the energy <laughs> to help us do that. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> so I've just put my plug in for it. <laughs> okay, any further discussions or comments on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Caro? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thank you. Citizens Open Forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I missed the comment. Back. Jeez. I circled the wrong thing. Agenda, thank you, Mr. Agenda item eight. I'm just very excited about this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> For approval, food, food vendor license, Mass Hole Donuts, 2 Lake Street, Alexander Mansfield. It's name and business address for the record. Hi. Um, Alex Mansfield. I'm um, hoping to open Mass Hole Donuts next month at 2 Lake Street. Um, right across the street from Richardson's Ice Cream. And um, yeah, I've, I live in Jamaica Plain currently, but in the process actually of moving to Arlington with uh, my wife and our 10-month-old daughter, <coughs> Naomi, next month. Um, my parents and my brother, Arlington residents, and couldn't be more excited to have finally found a physical location for the business here in Arlington. Um, we've actually been working out of the space at Two Lake Street since it was a shared kitchen, um, the local fair. Um, and when they decided that they were moving on, they asked the local tenants who were renting from them if anybody wanted to purchase the business and take over. So uh, my business partner and myself, um, who uh, my partner Peter is also, he's an Arlington resident for over 20 years. Um, if anybody, his name is Peter Gladstone, if anybody happens to have met him. But um, so he also has some experience in the food business. He was the director of advertising for Sam Adams for um, a long time, and um, now he helps a variety of local uh, businesses and things like such. So, yeah, I'm very excited to be opening the business here, and you know, if there are any questions you all have for me. Well, we're all aware, but can you just state days and yeah. times of operation and what the fair will be? It's kind of per yeah. pretty obvious, but... So it's a wide selection of gourmet donut holes and coffee, um, and... That's basically all we'll be serving there. Um, potentially some slushies as well in the warmer months. Um, and we'll be open just mornings to start, very limited hours to start probably Thursday through Sunday from seven to one and eventually expanding that, um, you know, depending on demand. But we're um, excited to both you know, have the storefront and then also provide catering for, we've already had a lot of local businesses reach out and talk about how excited they are to get them get the donuts for their office and <laughs> everything like that so mm -hmm. um, and I yeah. if I could I would just ask um, attorney Heim <clears throat> a procedural question I'm going by memory I believe um, 
in this application. The application was Tuesday to Sunday, 7 to 2 p.m. Mm. Um, I just want to know on how to proceed with this. Right now he's saying Thursday through Sunday. Um, do you, do yeah, we, sorry, do you I, want the I was unfamiliar with the, um, so I think initially we wanted to open with the limited hours and then ex expand to the Tuesday through Sunday. Okay. Um, I'm not trying to limit yeah. you at all. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure, do we just grant the Tuesday through Sunday or? I think it's in the board's discretion to grant it with the understanding that those won't necessarily be the operating hours at the initial kickoff and that there is at least a reasonable expectation that that may happen as the business gets its sort of feet set rather than coming back here mm -hmm. to amend their application. Yeah. I, I, I frankly, no, I think the board can go either way. And the only thing I would say, for some reason after you, you know, do your soft open and everything, you, you do get to um, Tuesday through Sunday, 7A to 2P. If you extend beyond the parameters of that, then I would say that you come in um, yeah, and course. amend your application. So, Happy And I'm to. not saying you shouldn't have Tuesday through Sunday. I'm fine with that. I just, uh, I'm a stickler when I hear things. So um, first, is there any motion? Move Mr. approval Kiro. of trust. All conditions are set forth. Seconded by Second. Mr. Hurd. Um, any questions, Mr. Kiro? I just want to say, I love the sign design. You should. I, I just it. got that a picture from there. Put such a smile on my face. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Hopefully, we'll and be not much a has been putting a smile on my face lately. So. That's great. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be bringing a lot of smiles and and yeah. donuts to town. So. Yeah. Thank you. I have to. If Mr. Greeley were here, our former colleague, he would be asking for samples, but I'm not. I'm asking samples from heaven. But did not um, know if that would count as bribery. So oh no, 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 exactly. No, he always that was his thing. He would always say, "Millions of, at home, right. tingling with anticipation." Do you have any samples? Um, any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Well, good luck. Thanks Thank for very staying much. in Arlington. Now we get to Citizens Open Forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. And I think Mrs. Kropelka is getting... I should have ran out and done that. Thank you. Okay, first on the list is Forrest Snyder. Hi there, uh, Forrest Snyder, 15 Allen Street here in Arlington. I'm pleased to see everybody here tonight. Um, I am I'm here this evening uh, once again to speak about the problems of racism, prejudice, sexism, and homophobia, and a whole host of other isms that appear endemic in the community. I would like to give a specific example of how these problems reach into all areas here in Arlington. Unknown probably to everyone here uh, this evening, I help organize a co-ed pickup soccer game that has been going on for more than seven years. On Sunday mornings, we often play at Thorndike Field. The individuals in this group vary, but we regularly have male, female, straight, gay players from Russian, Russia to Senegal, Singapore to Costa Rica, and many, many countries in between. I'm particularly proud of these people. These men and women have arrived from all over the world to find a pickup game of soccer in Arlington, Massachusetts. Not only do we play together every week, but we have a few um, that have made lifelong friends. We have couples that play together. A number of us see each other socially quite often. We assist each other professionally as well. We've helped each other move too often to count and a rock band consisting of members from Ohio, Germany, and France plays together every Thursday. Unfortunately, after the select board meeting two weeks ago, I did not feel confident that everyone was equally safe and protected in my community. This past weekend, to my great sadness and shame, I felt compelled to share with my pickup game that Arlington has problems with racism. We discussed the situation, and I told them if they ever felt targeted, harassed, followed, or threatened in any way to call me. It is unconscionable that a group of fun-loving soccer players should ever doubt for their safety. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lenard Diggins. 
I like the Lennard part. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll, you so, took the time to write it. I'm going to yeah, say it. No, no, that's great. It's great. You know, so so I'll, there will probably be an email. I, I put in a request to the, the town moderator to send an email on this, but I wanted to get it out to you know, the people who are watching because there are most likely people who would be interested in attending a precinct meeting to brainstorm for all residents. You know, uh, it's, this, I'm saying this on behalf of Envision Arlington and the purpose of the meeting is to discuss ideas around um, fall precinct meetings. We had spring precinct meetings, but we're trying to do precinct meetings twice a year now. Um, and so we want to get some ideas from people about how to organize and plan those. Um, and also um, another topic will be orientation for new town meeting members. And a fourth one will be uh, to create a new welcome to Arlington guide you know, that will help people find answers quickly with a, an emphasis also on town governance. And you know, I'm really big into the precinct meetings. So and to the extent that you all talk to folks about this, let them know it's going to be um, in the Lions hearing room on October 2nd. Um, from 7 to 9 p.m. I hope we're not sending a conflicting message by saying that we have a small space because we're not expecting many people. I hope that there are so many people that we have to move it to a larger space. I mean, and along these lines, um, for the spring meeting, I know this is a big ask, uh, but one of the issues with spring, the spring meetings is that we don't have a lot of information by the time uh, we have those meetings. And, um, and it would be really helpful if we could at the very least get the select board uh, report because at that point we have me all the warrants you know at that point and and um, your take on them and and not only is your take valuable but there's a big explanation for what the warrants are about because I mean I'm sorry what the articles are about in the warrant because the the warrant itself is very limited in information, and so it's very hard to talk to you know the members of the precinct about how we think about anything without that information. And so, so I know like you need all the time you can get to do the report, but but it would be all possible to get it like maybe the Monday after the election. Uh, it would give us a little more to go on when we have the spring uh, precinct meeting. So thank you for your time and attention. Any questions? We'll do whatever we can on that, but I, I can't tell you how close to an impossible task that is with so many warrant articles in concert with the redevelopment board, the zoning board, finance committee. So what I would say is let's work on it, see yeah. where it goes, yeah. as well as what other precinct meetings have done, which I've done with um, yeah. 14. 16 and we've expanded right, 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 right. it is you can always contact the select board office yeah. on a particular warrant article that okay. you know that you feel okay. is going to be widely discussed yeah. if we can't get the information because it's coming from the proponent which right. we have no control right. we can usually give a contact name and you can contact okay. that person great great and if All we right. get more town participation instead of 88 articles it might be like 120 <laughs> so okay. i guess care for what you wish for huh yeah <laughs> thanks len thanks Thank len you. Um, next, we have Elizabeth Dre. Oh, I have a phone call. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Um, oh, they left. I wanted to thank uh, Chief Kelly and thank Chief Flaherty for coming because I was really impressed um, with the Narcan training and I was really happy to hear about the gun buyback program. Um, and the homeless outreach is really important work, so thank you. Um, I'm Elizabeth Dre. I live at Jason Street. Um, I have lived here for 18 years and raised uh, my family here. I'm also the executive director of the Arlington Tales and Day Sister Pro Project. Um, I wanted to share with you what I've been doing in the last two weeks. Um, since I was last before you, I have had individual meetings with Mr. Hurd, uh, Mr. Dunn, Mr. DeCourcy, Senator Friedman, um, Ms. Ms. Uh, Chairwoman Mahone. I would love to meet with I you at your, would, at your convenience. Joe, so. I let you pass this time. I just figured you've heard enough from me. So. <laughs> Well, I'll be back. Okay. Um, so I, uh, I wanted to thank you for being so generous with your time. Uh, in those meetings, I stressed a common message, um, which is leadership, and leadership that I would, I'm looking to come from this board. The lack of the leadership has led to a vacuum, and as we all know, vacuums don't stay empty. It's been filled with angry voices on both sides, frustrated voices, um, disappointed people, confused. It's just noise. And we're there and we are stuck there because you have not laid a path for us to come out of this void. And I'm asking you to unify us. In that spirit, I'm asking for one of you, or all of you, 
not really sure how it all works, to put forth an agenda item on the October 7th select board meeting to endorse a letter to the public that comes from the town manager, the Arlington Police Department, and the select board that contains the following four items. Labeling Lieutenant Padrini's words as racist. Explaining to the community why his words are racist, because that's a very contentious issue in our community, and we need you to give us the language to unify us behind this. We'd like you to thank the residents who have kept this at the forefront of the town. Because we have been working to make Arlington a better place for all residents. And these sim seem simple, but I know they're not simple. And I feel like in my meetings, I still haven't gotten this across. I feel like everybody wants to jump to action items. And I love action items, don't get me wrong. I would love action items like a binding trust act, like a citizen review board. I would love a um, action item like the select board advises the town manager to keep Officer Padrini on desk duty throughout the remainder of his contract, that the select board tells the town manager that they will back him up from any pushback from the union on this issue, and if the select if the town manager chooses to oh, sorry, thank not you. follow the advice of the select board, that you hold him accountable at his next job review. You are his boss. Thank you very much. And I, I would advise definitely read the town manager act. Next, we. I, have, I didn't get my three minutes. Yes, you did. I did. You went beyond. Yes. I apologize. I'll Last time these. I gave you thank all you. four minutes, and it just didn't seem to help the situation. So, Manisha Sharma. Hi, my name is Manisha Sharma. I live at 13 Mary Street. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come here and speak. Uh, I just wanted to add my voice and concern with respect to what has been happening with um, Officer Pedrini and the town's response to his racist and xenophobic remarks and articles. Um, I followed this um, whole issue closely since late last year, read the articles that were published, uh, followed along with the response, and I've been left dissatisfied by what has been done so far. And, um, and I would like to know, um, I would like to better understand what sort of decisions led to the use of restorative justice. Um, when kind of, if I look up other municipalities and jurisdiction and try to see if they had similar situations and how they dealt with it, um, I came up just in the recent past with a huge number of, just with a few Google keywords, I was able to come up with a number of articles um, that talk about racist remarks by police officers and the disciplinary action that followed. Um, so. I really would like to understand how, what were the decisions around restorative justice? Um, why was this path followed versus others? Um, you know, I, just, just as a citizen, I'd like to understand uh, this perspective. So hope, I'm hoping that you're able to share that in a transparent and open way. Um, I, I'm gonna submit by email what I found and I learned about this Plain View project that documents social media posts by police officers all over the country, and they found hundreds and hundreds of objectionable, racist, xenophobic, Islamophobic posts by officers, and they provided, they documented and provided this to the Dallas and Philadelphia administrations, and immediately action was taken, disciplinary proceedings followed, and some officers were fired. So I'm just trying to understand, you know, how does Town of Arlington deal with it, and would you please share that with us in a more open and transparent way? The second thing I just wanted to talk about is uh, from an immigrant's perspective. I'm an immigrant here. I became a U.S. citizen a couple of years ago, and I, I definitely I participate in voting and trying to understand local, state, national issues. Um, I heard at some of these meetings that you were not hearing from impacted communities. So from an immigrant's perspective, I just wanted to say that 
there, I think it's going to be very hard for someone to stick out their neck and say that I'm dissatisfied, I'm not happy, because just the circumstances for being Thank an immigrant is really hard. Think about recent incidents of students arriving and sent back, people's work Thank status. Thank you very much. I really have more people on the list, and I have a whole it. full agenda, so it's, yeah. I'm okay. trying to be respectful and mindful of everyone. We had a Ab two-hour meeting last week. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Lynette Martin. Uh, good evening. My name is Lynette Martin, 18 Eustis Street. Um, I want to contrast um, the, all, all the police outreach that Chief, uh, Acting Chief Flaherty brought here today with the, uh, the entire lack of focus that's been placed on the community harmed by Lieutenant Pedrini's words. We're doing all this great outreach, which is wonderful for the community, and I'd like to see those relationships blossom. But meanwhile, um, there are a lot of people in this community that were harmed by those words, and there has not been direct outreach um, in that regard. Um, I want to stress the important decision coming up on whether or not to keep Lieutenant Pedrini on administrative assignment. Um, I know that the town manager has the authority to make that decision, but this group has the authority to make suggestions and recommendations to the town manager. Um, it is in his contract that he can be put on, left on administrative assignment. I've confirmed that with Adam Chapdelaine, our town manager. Um, the union may uh, push back and there might be arbitration, but I would argue that the cost of arbitration versus the cost of damage to the community trust and also potential liabilities for the countless civil suits that we could face for any people that Lieutenant Pedrini should arrest in the future that identify as one of the harmed communities. So any people of color he should arrest, any immigrants he might arrest, any addicts he might arrest, any people with mental health disorders that he might arrest could all come back to bite us um, in a civil suit. Um, and I wonder if the town has looked into increasing our liability insurance is a very good question. Um, and I have concern about two weeks ago, the endorsement. Um, while I appreciate um, the bravery expressed by certain select board members who did not just blindly sign on to the town manager's letter, um, you all did vote to instead endorse um, all the town manager's actions up until this point. And um, via conversations that I and other members of the petition organizers have had with the select board, um, it's clear that not all the FOIAs have been read, that there's still some knowledge to be gained in this process. Um, there are very serious consequences on the table for this, so even though I understand that uh, many of us have a really great relationship with the town manager, there's people who I trust implicitly, but we all make mistakes sometimes, um, and that doesn't mean that the town manager is a bad person or, um, I'm not advocating here today that he should be fired, but it, it, people need to be checked. Um, and so I would urge the select board to further research this and to make a recommendation to the town manager that he either not put the town man, uh, put Pedrini back on administrative assignment or look for a Thank third party so to help make the decision. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Beth Malofchik. I apologize if I said it incorrectly. <laughs> Thank you, members. Uh, is it Mr. Poole, Mr. Heim, Ms. Kropelka? My name is Beth Malofchuk. I live at 20 Russell Street. I love trees. I love democracy. They are under threat in Arlington, disallowing and discouraging opposing views, whether by a gavel. Those who attend redevelopment meetings are familiar. The chair has a heavy hand. Not awarding booth space at town day, a citizen's advocacy group was informed there was no space for them, no space for their message, I believe. There seemed to be plenty of space at town day. Shortening time allowed for public comment, that was attempted at town meeting. Stacking committees and groups with team players. Requesting police presence at meetings. These are together chilling methods in a democracy. There is not one single event, there is a pattern. Groups and individuals are labeled divisive, never happy. 
When I read that a member of the select board wrote the town manager to encourage having police at meetings, that this select board member called the landlord of a citizen for background info on this person with dissenting opinions, I was stunned. The town manager made a bad executive decision. You continue to support this decision. Rather than recognizing this decision as a failure of leadership, rather than issuing a broad, condem rather than issuing a broad condemnation of your fellow select board members' methods, there is silence. There are statements of support which defy common sense and the well-researched, well-written word. The silence of the select board on what counts has been deafening. Your words of support for a failure of leadership are loud and clear. Listen to the people, I entreat you. Stop circling the wagons of bureaucracy. Listen to the people. Disavow the bullying tactics of a former select board member, which are revealed in the Freedom of Information Act documents, which are posted online. And I ask you, please, embrace the nobility and the humility of leadership. You are our elected representatives. Recognize this failure. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's going to go off. She had eight seconds left. Sorry. Cancel. Um, that's all I have for Citizens Open Forum. We'll now go on to agenda item nine. Request to sign non-binding resolution in support of an act for utility transition to using renewable energy. Uh, Brucey Moulton and Mothers Out Front. I know we do have the um, information before us here tonight um, asking the board to um, consider endorse and approve um, a, a resolution uh, around the renewable energy, energy um, bills making their way through the state house. I, I want to commend Mothers Out Front so much for spending so much time on this, so much education. Um, I really felt like you were not only the only resource I had before all the gas explosions, but the only resource that took a lot of my concerns seriously. I remember one night we had a selectman's meeting when the moratorium was in place, um, and uh, two residents came in and said, you know, well, you know, we feel comfortable. Can you let us move forward on that? And I kind of felt like they were questioning my sincerity of um, utmost concern of what I knew was out there in terms of crafts, in terms of uh, gas, in terms of uh, the destruction it can cause, you know, especially with lives. Um, I kind of felt like with the exception of mothers out front, um, you all r really took me um, and others um, s seriously. And then unfortunately, and I remember the night that that individual was here, the, the company that he cited um, that he felt perfectly com comfortable with, who I said, they just lay dead pipe, because I've worked in the craft, um, was allegedly one of the main culprits. So I want to commend you for, um, I think what you have before you is a lofty goal, but I'm of the opinion that you just keep going for that lofty goal, no matter how far it is, like my eliminating CSOs. Um, so with that, I'd, I'd like to hear um, what you all would like to say. I'd like to hear from my colleagues um, in terms of if we've had enough time after listening to the presentation and having the information here before us tonight mm -hmm. to vote. I'm mm -hmm. going to be guided by what my colleagues say. But first, if you could just name an affiliation. Sure. Well, thank you. Good evening. My name is Brucey Moulton. I have lived in Arlington since 1976, and I'm a Precinct 12 resident. I am a co-coordinator of Mothers Out Front in Arlington, co-chair of Sustainable Arlington, and serve on the town manager's gas leaks task force. I am here tonight to ask you to sign a non-binding resolution in support of a bill currently before the Massachusetts House and Senate, H. 2849, and S. 1940, an act for utility transition to using renewable energy, often called the Future Act. The Future Act has been submitted by representatives Lori Ehrlich and Christina Minicucci 
and Senator Cynthia Cream. It has over 45 co-sponsors, including Arlington representatives Sean Garbally and Dave Rogers. The bill has been referred to the Joint T Committee on Telecommunications, Utilities, and Energy, and we were hopeful that it will be moved forward to passage. The purpose of the Future Act is to move Massachusetts off fossil fuels, in particular natural gas, in a well-managed, swift, and judicious fashion. In addition to the support of many state legislators, the Future Act has also received a strong recommendation from a new report published by the Gas Leaks Allies, a group of 28 organizations, including the Boston Climate Action Network, Clean Water Action, Climate Reality Project, Community Labor United, Conservation Law Foundation, Greater Boston Physicians for Social Responsibility, HEAT, those are the folks that make those great gas leaks maps that we depend on for knowing where our gas leaks are, Mothers Out Front, Dr. Nathan Phillips of Boston University, Sierra Club of Massachusetts, Toxics Action Center, and 350 Mass, to name just some of the members. The Gas Leaks Allies report is called Rolling the Dice, Assessment of Gas System Safety in Massachusetts, and it was published to coincide with the one-year anniversary of the Merrimack Valley gas explosions. Its conclusions state the underlying assumptions of the gas delivery system are faulty. It provides examples of how pipe materials fail on a regular basis, even the new plastic ones, how the design of the system ensures single point failures and how gas can be unintentionally ignited. The report also describes the causes of leaks that trigger these incidents and outlines what can be learned from them, as well as what is lacking in official reports. For immediate action to preserve and protect public safety, this report offers the Commonwealth, municipalities, utilities, state agencies, and regulators specific recommendations that relate to current operations and system maintenance. The report makes a compelling economic case for taking into consideration long-term as well as short-term issues, longer-term related to safety, health, and climate protection, a cost-effective managed tradition, transition from dependence on gas to a safer, cleaner, and more resilient system based on renewable energy, thermal technologies, and energy efficiency. The port report points to legislation that provides utilities with policies and incentives to shift how they source and deliver energy. And that legislation that is recommended is a future act. I believe that signing the proposed non-binding resolution in support of the future act is consistent with Arlington's strong record of environmental leadership which I know you have heard the town manager and the town energy manager describe on a, a number of occasions. I have sent you a, have excerpts from this report, the Rolling the Dice report. I'm happy, it's all online. If you are curious and have time to read more, it's there. Um, I would also like to introduce B.J. Bates, um, who has been uh, working on this, and she would like to describe another aspect of the um, report that, of the future bill and how it evolved from the gas leaks work of heat and mothers out front, and how it supports the adoption of district heating, a heating technology that does not rely on gas. If you could just say your name again, sorry. Yeah. Good evening. My name is B.J. Bates, and I live in Precinct 8 here in Arlington. Since retiring from the Carroll School in Lincoln, I got involved in trying to understand some of the pressing issues here in Massachusetts regarding climate change. So I joined Mothers Out Front, I joined Elders Climate Action, and most recently I've been a volunteer member of the Heat Smart program here in Arlington. Uh, I am here to speak on the behalf of the non of 
the non-binding resolution in support of an act for utility transition to using renewable energy, Senate 1940 and House 2849, known as the Future Act, which is a very high priority of mothers out front. Last spring, I was tabling at the EcoFest here in Arlington, and I had an opportunity to talk about this bill. And I found when Ar Arlingtonians stopped to listen, they were very excited and very enthusiastic about it. Why do we need a future act? Well, Massachusetts has the second oldest fossil fuel infrastructure in the nation, and it needs to be replaced. Substantial portions are aging and deteriorating and increasingly prone to leaks. The current estimate is it will cost $3 billion to replace this, this infrastructure over 20 years. Um, the Global Warming Solutions Act requires that we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions to 80% below 1990 levels by 2050. The Future Act would increase this requirement to achieving 100% reduction or net zero by 2050. Clearly, if we replace all this infrastructure, we are going to end up with a lot of stranded assets if we really meet our goal of 2050 of net zero. So the question arises, is there a better way to spend the $3 billion? And the people who wrote the future bill looked around to see what they might find, and lo and behold, they discovered over in Sweden there's something called district heating. Um, and by the way, Stockholm, which is a big, uh, uses a lot of district heating, has about the same climate that we have here in Massachusetts. District heating has been used there since to the 1950s. District heating provides heat through distributing hot water through a centralized network of insulated pipes, it serves buildings, neighborhoods, a business park, and even a whole community. The hot water pipes are well constructed, highly insulated, and can last up for a hundred years. And the pipes cost about as much as the pipes cost for, for fossil fuel. So district heating is a very effective in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The hot water is produced by either renewal, is heated by either renewable or clean energies. And the city of Stockholm has been called one of the cleanest capitals in the world and was given the title of green capital in 2010, be, partly because of, or mainly due to the district heating program that they have. Getting off of natural gas is not a pipe dream. We now have long-term examples of how it can be done. And think about the benefits of district heating based on hot water <laughs> instead of natural gas. Compare, natural gas and hot water does not cause asthma attacks. It doesn't kill trees. It doesn't explode. And it doesn't accelerate climate change. By contrast, when natural gas leaks, which it, does, <clears throat> which it does every day in large amounts in our leaky distribution system, releases methane into the atmosphere, it's leaking 95% <clears throat> methane gas. For the first 20 years after methane escapes into the air, its climate change, I'm sorry, its effect on climate change is 84 times more than CO2. I like to think about blankets of warming our planet. If we're adding one unit of CO2, it's like adding one blanket. If we add one unit of methane, it's adding 84 blankets. Fixing gas leaks at a rate that reduces the overall number is not easy. Arlington had 177 gas leaks in 2016. Despite all the repairs, we now have over 300 gas leaks, and some go for years without getting repaired. There are currently many bills, as uh, Senator Fridman said earlier today, in our 191st legislative session regarding climate change. 
There's the Benson Carbon Pricing Bill. There's the uh, Barrett Carbon Pricing Bill. There's a Roadmap Bill. There's a 100% Renewables Bill. There's a Healthy Source Bill, Soils Bill, sorry, and the Future Act. All of these bills may be part of what we need to do to reach net zero by 2050. But the Future Act is a critical tool for us in fighting climate change, especially here in Arlington, because we are a bedroom community and we get 40% of our greenhouse gas emissions from our buildings and homes. So please vote yes for a non-binding resolution to support the Future Act. It's a doorway to a much cleaner and safer uh, future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Um, I know we just got this tonight and it's uh, uh, pretty detailed. So uh, I guess I would look to my colleagues uh, in terms of first, is this something we can um, address tonight and get all the uh, answers to the questions? Is it something since we just received it tonight I put on the next agenda so that any due diligence or questions, Mr. Hurd? I, mean, I would recommend, you know, we're able, because of the agenda item, to look into the actual bill. It would certainly be something that I would support. I am a little uncomfortable given the, how many, I think it's something that we can, would certainly want to endorse, but I think it would be wise, in my opinion, to put it on to the next agenda next meeting just for the purpose to allow us to read what we're voting on if we're going to go ahead and vote this resolution i think i'm, I'm tending to agree with mr hurd on this um although it's hard for me to imagine that that the sentiment of the board wouldn't be in the, in this direction for the, for the most part it's pretty consistent with town goals and it, from what's been presented, town goals, past actions of the of the town, and and such. Um, uh, but um, for example, I mean the, the the report, the rolling the dice report. I just received that today. That looks, that's that's pretty thick. And I need I need a little bit more time. That, that's fine. That's fine. But I think um, we would probably want to you know take a look at that. But uh, you know, as I look at this, I, I just have a couple of thoughts. Um, um, it's consistent with some of the, the the green initiatives that we've that we've we've taken, and also some of the concern that this board has expressed around the um, the natural gas um, infrastructure, for for, for sure. Um, I, I was just flipping through the bill. I see that it um, uh, provides municipalities with new powers, which I think we do definitely want to understand that um, what what tools are here. And lastly, I think I'd be remiss. Uh, I didn't say that, you know, this has been, I think, on a lot of people's minds uh, th since this weekend. Um, I happily signed my daughter out to go join the strike on, on, uh, on Friday, and I spent all weekend at my graduate school um, reunion, which was in international economics and finance, but interestingly, so many of the panels, including um, discussion with Janet Yellen, the former Fed chair, revolved around the threats to the world economy from climate change. So much of it, it um, um, the airtime was around that. So um, I definitely want to read more. I think it is probably wise for us to, 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 uh, to move the table to the next um, meeting though for a vote. Um, and uh, I'd love to have, I, well, I guess Mr. Pula could represent very well. <laughs> information but but uh, I know this has been near and dear to Ms. Chapdeline's heart too so, so is that a motion? I would move motion to, to, to postpone table to, to the uh, postpone uh, to the next um, to October to October next 7th. Meeting. yes second seconded by Mr. Hurd um, and it's the only um, avenue I'd ask you all to explore which you may have already and my me memory could be extremely faulty um, I don't know if the Senate or the House bill has already started on its way and had, had asked for comments or resolutions or the like. Um, I know when that does happen, what you do to get um, any board, council, commission support registered is whomever the, whether it's in the House or the Senate, whoever that person is, um, that you ask them to go and at, at a meeting and as a courtesy from their fellow colleagues to 
um, ask that this be entered into the record because I have in my head that um, maybe we didn't miss the deadline to get in um, support for the 1920 session, but if you could just explore that. Because I know if that is the case, there's also a way to get it submitted into the record. Mm -hmm. And then we can continue on. And it could be I'm mixing up a Senate or a House bill, but I want to say one of them have, because I did some research on this. But that doesn't mean we can't, at our next meeting, whatever we vote, um, it's just a different way that it gets entered into the record. You know what I'm saying? And I could be totally wrong, but I'm pretty sure one of them, I think the deadline may have been Friday, but yes. And could I, could I ask, is there available a point-by-point a point info sheet on the bill itself? Yes, I should. Yeah. Yes, yes, there is. There is, okay, okay. Yes, that'd be helpful. Okay, yeah. um, any further question or comment? And we'll ask the acting town manager to relay um, queries um, to the town manager. On a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hur, to move to postpone uh, for approval sustainable transportation, um, request to sign non-binding resolution um, to October 7th, 2019. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Sorry, my eyes jumped ahead. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Um, next, uh, for approval, sustainable transportation committee roster, I would turn to our deputy town manager, acting town manager, Mr. Cooler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in your um, packet, you have a memo um, from Ken, excuse me, <coughs> Kelly Linneman, Linneman the uh, senior planner with a list of community leaders recommended for Arlington's complete, uh, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong one. You have a roster. I've done that three times tonight, so you've got a lot of time to catch up with me. Thank you very much. A roster of uh, community members uh, to be appointed to the Sustainable Transportation Plan Advisory Committee. Um, there are 13 members here. Sheets look like this. Um, so that uh, the town can go forward um, uh, on our, uh, with the committee's work. So we'd ask your support for uh, these appointments. Is there a motion? Move approval. Move. Second. By Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Um, any questions or comments on the makeup of the committee or anything else? If not, all those on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Now we go to agenda item 11 for approval, complete count committee roster. Um, Acting town manager, Mr. Pooler. I feel like deja vu all over again. Uh, you do have a memo uh, that lists um, uh, members of the public to uh, be members of this committee for the complete count uh, committee. As you are well aware, the census is coming up and um, we want to make sure that every resident of Arlington is counted in the federal census. I know uh, staff has already started working on this issue. Uh, we've, uh, as recently as last week, sent in a number of address corrections to the census to have them line up with our maps and so forth. Adam Krasky has been busy with that. Um, this is another part of it to uh, engage in outreach and connection with, with community members to make sure that um, every person out there uh, who aren't counted can be counted. Um, that will certainly help us with things like uh, distribution of uh, federal aid, CDBG funding, and other uh, state funding. So uh, we would request, respectfully request that you approve these members as members of the committee. Move approval. By Mr. Carroll. Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Is that a word? I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Dunn. Uh, Cindy, I'm absolutely happy to approve all these people, I'm uh, but I'm also curious, what's the, how does this group work with the, like the, the town public information officer and stuff like that? Like, is this like a different working group and then they, like I'm just thinking about like, like you know, Joan and emails and, and like uh, doing more, I'm absolutely in favor of. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to ask how this ties into some of our more traditional publication methods. I think it is because some of the members here have connections, particularly with, with um, populations that might 
not necessarily be tied into the census, mm -hmm. and I think through their expertise and day-to-day -day work with some of those populations is hope that they can make those connections and make people aware of the importance of participating in the census and maybe allay some of the fears that people who are uh, new to the community or maybe even new to this country um, have about participating in something like this. So um, I think it's, it's because they are community-based that their input yep. is valuable. Okay. Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Uh, do you. Do you have a sense, um, I mean, is there going to be a multilingual um, outreach in our local efforts around um, the, the um, census, census outreach? I mean, you know the chilling effect that there was with the, um, the attempted inclusion of uh, the citizenship question. On the, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I can't speak with any authority on the exact plans going forward, however, um, I do think it, we know that having multilingual outreach is important to many people in our community. Uh, we have a lot of languages in Arlington and a lot of people from around the world. Um, so uh, again, without trying to make representations about something that I don't have personal knowledge of what we're doing, I would say that that uh, is and should be an important part of this outreach. Okay, thank you. And I, I do want to say, um, having conversations with Mr. Pooler and uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, that um, in the importance of, of getting everybody counted, a complete count, an accurate count, um, that the four individuals highlighted um, are just the face of the group, nonprofit, et cetera, that they represent, as well as, um, you know, we, we, Pat Lieberson, League of Women Voters, her years of experience through that should be the best person to also get other people from the League of Women Voters. Um, Lauren Ledger, co-founder of Arlington Eats, she serves an, an extremely vital population. We've all been down there volunteering, and I know she's identified within her framework of volunteers um, some of the same issues that um, Mr. Kiro and others have in terms of somebody that we may need to um, communicate the message perhaps in a different language, but also she knows people, especially from that community, that those persons have been identified and the relationship has been formed because that's, that's another big step to it. And Brucey Moulton, who just was here, uh, Mothers Out Front, um, she, she has ex, uh, extensive, um, not only networking, but experience in, in, in terms of organizing. And then our last resident, Ellen Lawton, as well as being an attorney, she works, um, I think, part of her day-to-day -day job with um, complete uh, groups across the country. Groups across the country. So, um, but I think one of the things that I'm myself and the rest of the members of the board are extremely pleased with that, you know, if you necessarily see one name, you know, there's probably five to seven plus people attached that will be assigned to working with these individuals. But I do know that we're going to miss something. Um, I just hope, you know, when we can, we do the best job to uh, do what we can do and um, maybe. Note that for the next time, or 10 years out, that, that that was an area we need to work on. So um, on a motion by Mr. Curo, seconded by Mr. Hurd, any further question or comment? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. And now we have discussion and approval. Police chief position, description, and hiring process. Um, there was a intent of um, just not having that back-to-back -back because um, but this is just the beginning of a process. So um, I will turn to the deputy town manager, Mr. Pooler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I think uh, we're all excited to move forward filling a permanent appointment to the police chief position. Uh, I know we are in the town manager's office, uh, and I uh, know from talking to many members of the police department that I think the department is very excited to move forward. Um, so uh, what you have with you, uh, you have a copy of a position description um, that uh, defines some, some of the major responsibilities uh, of the position. We have moved forward. Uh, last Friday, we interviewed two um, various consulting firms that can run a, um, an assessment center for us where they um, <clears throat> do run the potential candidates through a series of exercises and then uh, grade them and assess them on that. Um, and we've decided to proceed with uh, awarding that to BadgeQuest. Um, 
I was part of the call on that the other day, and I think they had a quite thorough and uh, significant understanding both of the process uh, in terms of uh, how to assess, how to bring police experience to their assessment team, and, um, and I think an appreciation of the importance of these positions in the community. Um, we will uh, post this position and um, certainly invite uh, eligible people within the department to apply. There is a selection panel. I am on it. Uh, we will uh, solicit a chief from another community um, along with um, the human uh, resources director um, to make a recommendation uh, to the town manager for final appointment. Um, we will schedule the assessment center. Uh, I believe we are looking for, we have not announced a, a date, but um, I believe it'll be sometime in mid to late October. Again, I think uh, people are eager to move forward with this, um, and, um, and so we will. Um, we also will have a um, community panel uh, representing a wide array, array of community groups, including the Human Rights Commission, the Rainbow Commission, Mystic Valley NAACP, Arlington Public Schools, a member from the recovery community, the immigrant community, and the Disability Commission and the Diversity Task Force, who will meet uh, with uh, Karen Malloy uh, and, after, and interview each of the candidates. Get and Karen will relay that their feedback to the town manager for his consideration and their input. Um, and so th that is the process now. I, I hope we can wrap it up soon enough to have um, a candidate selected and announced by early November. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, first I'll take a motion to move to receive Mr. DeCourse. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd like to make a motion to, well, I'd like to move receipt of the memorandum and the uh, in the description. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. Kiro. Mr. Corsi, did you? Yeah, no, I appreciate the, the, the update, um, Mr. Pooler. I, I, I do think it's critical that, that we do move forward to um, hiring a permanent police chief. Um, I moved receipt tonight because while I appreciate you providing me with the, providing on the board with the update on the process and the steps you have taken, as, as we all know, this is the, the town manager's hire, and it, it feels to me that we should be receiving receiving it rather than approving the process and approving the job description. So for that reason, I moved receipt. Mm -hmm. And that falls in parlay with, um, in terms of the town manager act. So, um, and if this is something that the board had requested the town manager just to um, not only outline the process that he, deems appropriate to move forward, but also to uh, let the community know uh, in terms of that. So any further questions or comments on a motion to move receipt by Mr. Corsi, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kiro. Yeah, I, I, I just had a question on number five. How, how do you see that um, uh, be, being implemented? Are you anticipating that that's one group meeting between um, uh, candidates and, and the representatives uh, of, of, of the enumerated uh, groups there, or are you anticipating that, that? I think the general idea was to try to have a, a meeting with a series of the candidates coming in, meeting with the entire group. Okay. Because I, I, uh, I, I realize that, that, that there's probably a limit to how large you can go there, but I'm, I'm looking here, and I think it's a great collection of folks as far as it goes, but I mean, we already talked earlier tonight about the type relationship between the police department and health and human services and so I, I see again this this will be your call but I see what I would consider some holes like for example Council on Aging they, they rely a lot on the police right and I so I don't see the senior representation there um, uh, the, I mentioned the Coalition, Youth Health and Safety Coalition, they, they handle all of our compliance efforts, our prescription drug take back. So I, there's some of those constituencies within the health and human services. I'm wondering if there's not a broader um, health and human services representation to be appropriate. Obviously that, that's up, up to you all 
Yeah, and that's and this is something that um, Mrs. Ms. Malloy um, has outlined, and it's sort of following a. Uh, parameter of, of what she's done before, she's done before um, and this, this is something that we're receiving this information that yeah. the, our human resource director um, is responding to yeah. the town manager taking into account what it is that she has to do under law what, what's got been it. done in past practice I mean got it. you can invite everybody the way no I know I know, I know you know, no, but then no. this really isn't for us it's it's for you know um, and certainly that I can go back to Mrs. Um, Malloy, and she may say that, well, that's encompassed in this person. I mean, there is a fair representation. Wearing two, two or three hats, so. Um, yeah. But I know our acting town manager will follow up on that accordingly. Yeah. I'll, I'll share that with Ms. Malloy. Yeah. And I know she's bound by yep. laws, um, civil service and other. Uh, absolutely. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, any further questions or comments on this uh, moved by Mr. Move receipt by Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Mr. Kiro. If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropalka? Hopefully, I'll see at least, I think, four of you Friday night. And remember, it's at 7 o'clock, not 6. Cocktail is 6 to 7. No, 7 to 8, I'm sorry, 7 to 8. 7 to 8 is the cocktail hour, and the dinner is at 8. Okay. It's an hour later this year. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's it for me. Attorney Hyde? No new business. Deputy Manager Pooler? I just have two quick items. I wanted uh, Adam asked me to announce. Uh, one is that we have received a, a Green Communities Act grant for $98,052. It will be used to install LED lighting uh, at the Audison Middle School in the gyms and locker room area, at the Bishop School in common areas, library in the main office and then the Jefferson Cutter House uh, for some exterior floodlights, um, which will help us um, save energy. Second is just to announce that uh, what may, people may already know, but that the uh, bus priority lane will return to East Arlington during the week of October 7th, running from Bar Farnham Street to the Alewife Brook Parkway. Um, we'll have a per permanent marking there to allow buses during um, the morning to run down that direction and speed up the commute. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, two items. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Mrs. Kropelka and the uh, Town Day Committee for another great job this year at, at Town Day. We were fortunate until about 2 o'clock to have yeah. nice weather <laughs> the rain came in. But I, I was told uh, after the fact that the girls' basketball team in Arlington High was selling umbrellas and they weren't moving too well oh, until 2 o'clock. <laughs> and uh, they ended up selling out. So. Um, thank you for a great job. I know you were here early, early Saturday morning uh, along with the whole team, so really appreciate that. The second thing, I want to recognize the Cowan Manor uh, Neighborhood Association. This past Saturday, they celebrated, the Neighborhood Association celebrated its 75th anniversary. It was formed in 1944. Mr. Hurd actually grew up in Cowan Manor, and uh, there were former residents there, and the, the Cowan Manor, Cowan was the, the Kelly Coal Company building land at the old Wyman Farm. That's, that's how Cowan Manor got its name. So there was a celebration at the Cowan Manor Park on Saturday. A number of former residents came, and, and uh, unfortunately I was out of town. I wasn't able to make it, but I, I understand it was a great event. So um, uh, it was a, a great day for that neighborhood. Mr. Dunn? No new business. Mr. Hurd? Just congratulate on a great town day. Luckily, my boys didn't make it to 2 o'clock, so I was nice and... <laughs> I had a roof over my shoulder when I ran. And I was at the event. I was a former Calamana resident that was invited to come back. But it was a great event. It was very well attended. You got to see some familiar faces and meet new faces at Colin Calamana home. And then I just wanted to, we had talked about some of the homeless coalition. I just want to remind everyone that a couple weeks ago we approved the 5K. This is one of their big fundraisers for the year. They had to do it in Arlington this year because of the, all the bridge closures in Somerville. So it's, if you know any runners, direct them to the website to sign up because you know, some of the people no, from Somerville can't over. make it over to Arlington. So we need to you know, rely on some Arlington residents to come in and, and help um, get some runners into the event. And as we've heard today on a few occasions, Arlington works very closely with that particular entity. So if you know any runners, let them know. It's a couple weeks. 
Thank you, Mr. Mr. Carroll. Um, just quickly, owners of the uh, Council on Aging the other night, they reported that um, the applications for the, um, the senior work-off programs have really outstripped what the uh, uh, record, what, what, it, what the uh, run rate was uh, last year. Um, I mean, part of it obviously is because of the, the, the conversation around um, override, but I think a lot of it also was because of some of the um, um, efforts that the council has been putting into public um, information about that. And they've been taking the opportunity actually to share with residents um, the availability of, of other uh, tax relief programs as well as um, fuel and heating assistance programs uh, too. So um, I would encourage any seniors who are li listening who might be you know, thinking about that, do con contact the uh, Council on Aging. I know that they've been working very closely with um, the assessor's office um, on, on these things um, and trying to get the, uh, the, the word out about, about what is uh, available. And I'd encourage anyone else um, uh, to, you know, consider some generosity to the senior um, tax relief fund, which does appear on your uh, uh, on your bills uh, and on the town website. That's it. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just talking briefly about Town Day. Um, you all do a fabulous job. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, it's the majority of the staff of the <coughs> select board office and anyone who has the fortune, misfortune of being related or good friends to them that are the volunteers for Town Day, um, as well as um, chiefs, department heads, and others. So as a tie into that, um, a lot of people have lamented the fact that Friday Night Fireworks isn't what it had been in the past. And it's not purely just $5,000. I mean, the fireworks alone are 8000 the town kicked in 3000 what happened was originally when Town Day started, it started over at the rink, um, Summer Street. My mother-in-law started it, and there was a bunch of booths inside the rink when it wasn't a rink anymore. And then 1976 came, and it was the Uncle Sam statue dedication. Up with people was coming to town. The UU Church was having uh, Victorian century garb, and so my mother-in-law moved it out onto Mass Ave, and it was in October. And for many years when it was run by a group of volunteers, augmented by, you know, department heads and, and town hall staff, um, it ran very well. And you had a committee of, you know, eight to ten citizen volunteers. And then when I came out and took it over 20-something um, years ago, Friday night, it was just Friday night fireworks. Um, I made sure I brought in probably 20 to 24 volunteer Arlington residents to pull off a Friday night, because a Friday night, when I took it over, there was no town funding for anything because it wasn't possible. So you had to pay for DPW starting on Monday to clean up Spy Pond. You had to pay, pay for um, Friday night, and this is what you have to fundraise for, fundraise for the money to pay, pay for the um, barge to be set out, um, appropriate fire um, staff to be there, then pay for all this, you know, police, fire, public works that you need at the event, as well as afterwards to clean it up as well as you have to fundraise for all the various events that I'm, we had made sure that, um, you know, you could get a free b balloon ride. You could go on the, 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 po the pony for free. You could get your face painted for free. All the walking acts that uh, musicians and, and quartets and things like that. That, would, that was never Friday night. That's something that myself and the then committee um, incorporated. And what happened about seven or eight years ago is, you know, you're at different times in your life. I had to step away from that. And what happened was, um, you, you know, I've been asking for years, as we all have, please, you know, if you like town day, you like Friday night, please volunteer. Right now, I think we have one citizen, Marion Camo, on the committee. We have Kathleen Darby from uh, Cambridge Savings Bank. And basically, we have forced, in my opinion, forced volunteers, which is town hall staff from the town managers and his office on down, um, that um, works on and makes Town Day happen on Saturday. And what we did was we came to the decision that we couldn't keep making these people, because it was purely no citizens with the exception of Ms. Camo that was on this committee, and that's why Friday night. So I would say to people, because I've you know, seen different postings and talking about certain employees, not us, we only make 3000 a year, but certain employee salaries, why couldn't we afford that? It's not so much that, but we need the citizens of Arlington. You need a good at least dozen 
um, to work on um, Friday night. So um, anybody out there, I, anybody who's been contacting me, I've been saying, you know, I'm not being sarcastic or tongue in cheek. It's just the town couldn't take on with our town personnel, police, fire, public works, everything to continue to do Friday night. And okay. we, we feel, and this board, then board had a discussion that town day really is a part of town of Arlington and how we uh, present ourselves. And we could justify um, uh, allotting the, the dollars as well as the manpower to it. So anybody out there, you, please you know, definitely volunteer. But I understand there's, there's a lot of opportunities in Arlington. So I'm not saying one is more important than the other. And with that, I will take a motion to adjourn by so moved. Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. All those aye. 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 Aye.